Hey y'all, so a lot of students have been pretty intimidated by titrations um, because, you know, at their face they seem pretty complicated. And at first glance, they are, you know, there are a lot of different scenarios for titrations, you know, acids and bases separately, I can get no problem, but when you start putting them together and mixing them and neutralizing different strengths and weaknesses, it seems pretty, pretty difficult. Um, but what I'm going to try to do is break it down in a way and provide a framework for you guys to be able to solve any acid base titration problem on this exam and even when you're not in this class any problem you might see in the future. Uh, so the first step is to realize or is to figure out what kind of titration is it. Is it a strong acid um, base with, a, with another strong acid base? titration, in which case that's pretty easy. That's just a regular neutralization reaction. Um, I'm not going to go over that. Uh, that's just neutralization, so that's not, not too complicated. Um, the second case is whether it's a weak acid or a base, and you're titrating with the opposite, you know, strong acid or a base. That's the case that we're going to focus on uh, in this video. So this is a question on one of our practice exams. I've changed a bit some of the numbers uh, to make it a little bit more easier to do uh, for the purposes of this illustration. So when you're doing a titration problem, um, I like to visualize it in terms of a number line um, that you're traveling from left to right. So at this point you have so, so at this point you have all of your weak base and that's your initial starting point obviously. And that's the end of the titration. This is where you have all the weak base. You've added um, zero of your type of your type trend, which in this case would be the uh, HCl. And at this point is when you've added all of it, and the um, titration is fully gone to completion. Uh, you should know the, the technical term for this name is actually the equivalence point. All right. So if you break a titration down into its steps or ranges, you can actually break it down into some very concrete points. You can obviously, you know, you have your your beginning point, you have your ending point, you also have the uh, my pen is reading weird. You have the half equivalence point, and those are your three main points of reference for a titration. And, and in that case, it breaks it out into a few ranges. So you have your first case or range, which is when you're at the very beginning, nothing's been added. You have when you're in between initial and the half equivalence point, you have the equivalence point, you have between the equivalent half equivalence point and the equivalence point, and then you have the equivalence point, and then um, when you're after the Equivalence point. So you can break any titration down um, into the, these six phases, and any particular question will only ask you about one of these six phases. It's, it's up to you to know to figure out which phase you're in, one through six. Um, and the way you do that is you first need to figure out uh, am I at the equivalence point, am I before it, or am I after it? Okay? Now, in the case of this particular problem, um, as it's written before the modifications, it's evidently obvious you have a lot more HCl than you do the base, so you know you're going to be in range 6, in which case that would just be a uh, strong acid problem. You know, you just you do the H plus equals um, Ca, and that's pretty much it. Uh, but the other five cases are slightly more complicated, but only just so. Uh, so the way, so the first thing that you're going to do is you're you're, you're going to find out what the equivalence point is, um, if it's not evidently obvious you're you know way at six or you're at one, um, that would be the first thing because that's your primary point of reference along the number line. That's the thing that's that's the most obvious and the first thing that you're going to have to find to figure out where the rest of the ranges are. And by, by me saying solving for the equivalence point, I'm saying what volume of titrant you have to add to fully neutralize the um, solution. So that's going to be mv equals mv. Um, I'm not going to go over the theory behind it because I'm assuming you already know that. I'm just going to go through the practical aspects of solving the problem. So in this case, this is going to be the um, 
M1 V1 equals M2 V2. This is this is going to be the um, the weak base. This is going to be the strong acid. So in this case, it would be you know one liter times you know two molar is equal to uh, 0.5 molar with a volume two. So V2 is going to be uh, four uh, liters. So I know that to get to the equivalence point, I have to add four liters of of acid. Which means the half equivalence point is going to be when I add two liters of the acid in, and that means if 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 um, if the question is asking me for between zero and two, I know I'm at range two. If I'm between two and four, I'm going to be uh, in range four. And if I'm if this if it's adding more than four liters, I'm going to be all the way in range six. So let's scroll down and keep on going or not scroll down because I don't know how to work this thing. No? Okay, great. No scrolling then. Cool. Uh, we'll figure out what's 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 going on. Oh, there we go. Okay, cool. Sorry about that. Um, the next uh, thing that we're going to do is we're going to go through each of the different cases. If you're at each stage, what, what do you do? So if you're at stage one, that means you, you have a weak acid or base and nothing else has been added yet. So you're just going to do the weak acid or base problem. You know, that's pretty straightforward and uh, doesn't require too much effort. If you're at stage two, then it's a bit more complicated because you started off with a weak acid or base and then you've added some um, strong acid base into it and now you've neutralized some of it. But in this case, all of the strong acid or base would be, in this case, the strong acid, because it's HCl, would be consumed. And what you have left over uh, at the end is going to be, um, so if you set up the equation, the rice table like this. So in this case, we would start off with uh, two moles of B. And let's say, you know, we added um, one liter of HCl, so one liter of 0.5 molar HCl, which is 0.5 moles. So we added 0.5 moles in. Um, we're going to add 0.5 moles of BH plus the other side. So when you do the rice table, you end up with 1.5 um, moles of the base left, and you have 0.5 moles of the BH plus, which is the conjugate acid. So in this case, it's a buffer for state for for stage two. You're going to use the um, the the basic buffer, ooh man, the basic buffer equation, uh, which I believe is OH minus uh, KB CB or CA. All right, that should be pretty pretty good. Next is if we're in stage three. So if you look, stage three is when you're at the half equivalence point. Well, you should know from paying attention in class. Uh, that at the half equivalence point, pH is going to be equal to pKa. So that's a shortcut. You can also do it, do the um, the basic the buffer equations, and you end up with the same thing. But that's a pretty nice shortcut, so you don't have to do all the extra math. Uh, if you're in uh, region four, you're in between the half equivalence point and the equivalence point. So at that point, the if we go back to, if we go back to the um, rice table, two zero. Now we're past the equivalence point, right? Or the half equivalence point. So one would be the half equivalence point. So let's just say we've added uh, one point five, and then plus one point five. We're now 0 0.5 and uh, 1.5. So now you have more of the conjugate acid than the, the than the base. You can still use the the basic buffer equation, um, but um, you know at that point you know that the uh, the pH is going to be more acidic, but it's still going to be a buffer equation. Um, if you can use the acidic one, which is uh, H plus. It's equal to Ka, uh, Ca over Cb. I think that's easier. 
Uh, that's just my personal preference. If you're at stage five, which is the e equivalence point, you know then you're pretty much at the end. Um, you're at the equivalence point. And if you go back to the rice table, you started off with two, and that was zero, and then you subtracted two, and you added two. You only have this uh, conjugate acid left. So now at the equivalence point, it becomes a weak acid problem. All you have is weak acid. So you're going to do the weak acid equation, which is um, KaCa. Ooh, wow, KaCa to the one half power, or yeah, to the one half power. If you keep on going from there, you're going to be at point six, which is you're now past the end of the equivalence the end equivalence point, and now you're just adding on strong acid. So in this case, you're just, all you have left is strong acid now. Um, so let's just say I added like five liters, just dumped in five liters of HCl, whole bunch in, um, and now I want to calculate the pH. Well, you have to subtract, uh, that would be 2.5 moles. You have to subtract the, the two that you use to neutralize the, um, the weak base, but you're left with 0.5 moles of the HCl left, and then, you know, some however much of the BH+. Plus. But because strong acid pretty much always beats out uh, weak acid, you're going to ignore that. You're just going to calculate the pH using the uh, strong acid one. So that's going to be pretty, pretty straightforward and simple as well. Um, and that's pretty much all the steps for solving a titration for for a weak acid base and you're titrating with a strong acid base. You know, just figure out the equivalence point, um, figure out what stage you're in. Are you at one, two, three, four, five, or six? And that should help pretty much help you solve any titration problem that you might see on the exam.